46 seconds left. Quarterback Taylor back to pass. He looks into the end zone. Fade pattern. Pure fire, near side. Leaps. Oh, yes. He catches it. Touchdown, Nebraska. The Virgins continues at Nebraska. Who will emerge as the new leaders? Last year's backup Joe Gans battles transfer Sam Keller for the quarterback spot. While the black shirt defense is anchored by yet another member of the Rude family. It's springtime in Lincoln and competition is in the air. Nebraska's annual red-white game is next on the NFL Network. The calendar says spring, but there is definitely a fall field in the air here in Lincoln today. Fans from around the state have gathered outside of Memorial Stadium trying to get the prime seats to watch Nebraska's final spring workout in preparation for the 2007 season. A crowd of over 60,000 expected today to watch the Husker football program. We welcome you inside Memorial Stadium. Greg Sharp with you, and it is a rite of spring in Nebraska to come watch the Huskers play spring football, and thus the big crowd here today for this game. Now, it is a game, but there are several different things about this game. You'll notice the quarterbacks will be wearing green. They're off limits. No contact allowed on the quarterbacks. And in the punt game, there'll be nothing but fair catches and no rushing of the punter. But it is still a special day, and one guy who can certainly relate to that is former Husker wideout Matt Davison, who played in four of these spring games. And Nebraska, like all programs around the country, Matt, trying to address some needs and concerns as they get ready for the upcoming football season. Yeah, that's right. And Nebraska football is discussed in this state 365 days a year, Greg. Today is no different. There's going to be main, four main things that people are looking for today. Can this team step up and beat the best teams in the country? Who is going to win the quarterback competition? Is this, this offense is loaded. That's what people want to see today. And also, how are they going to replace Nebraska, their four defensive linemen that are all going to be in the NFL next year? But the main thing, all eyes will be on the quarterback competition. Who will win this going into the 2007 fall season? Will it be Joey Gans or will it be transfer from Arizona Sam Keller? These two guys, dissimilar in a lot of ways, and we're going to get into that a little bit more. But these two guys are going to be watched by everybody in Memorial Stadium today. One guy we're going to be watching as well is Bill Callahan. We've got him mic'd up inside the Husker locker room. Let's go see what he's talking about with his team. What's up, We're just looking at you. It's filming you out here today. Oh, you're filming me today. Number two, he's just stretching. You want to run. What place do you want to run? You want to get you to draw quad? I like power. You know, I'm a power, power man. I'm a 97 <laughs> power man. 97 power? 97 power man. I got this camera in here, so you got to smile. I got to try to smile. <laughs> oh, uh, once I got he power. never smiles. This is a great time to put him on the camera and make him smile today. One of the great traditions at Nebraska is the tunnel walk and the Husker football team entering the field led by head coach Bill Callahan for the red white game here today in Lincoln. Sun splashing down on Memorial Stadium for this game here today. The Huskers coming off of a Cotton Bowl appearance last January. It was the last time Nebraska played a game and that was again the Auburn Tigers as we take a look back at this 2006 season and Matt Nebraska got off to such a tremendous start in 06. Yes, the only loss being to USC out there in California, and it was a good start, but a little bit of a stumble down the stretch. As you look at the last games of the 2006 season, there were some losses, but to, to really good teams, and that's what Nebraska faces going into 2007. Will they be able to step up, Greg, and, and beat those teams, the top 10 teams in the country? We are ready for action here in Lincoln today. The Red Squad, which is the number one unit for Nebraska, will get the football to start the game. And so the White will be kicking off. And one early change you may notice is the kickoff coming from the 30-yard line. It's a new rule change this year in college football. Back five yards from what it has been in the past. In fact, you can still see the paint on the field where the kickoff would have come from in the past at the 35. So that leads for better kick coverage as Courtney Grigsby gets it and then knocked out. Good coverage by the White. Grigsby slammed to the turf at about the 27 yard line. So the Red will line up offensively to start this and again the Red squad is where the number ones will be working today. The White will be the backup players for this Nebraska team and Sam Keller will get the first snap at quarterback this afternoon for the Huskers. There's a look at what he did at Arizona State when he last played in 2005. He transferred to Nebraska. We'll talk more about that as this game moves along. An offset eye 
And it's Martin Lucky on the first carry for a couple. Nice job by Dillard. Philip Dillard to trip him up. Offensively, a very experienced unit for Keller to work with. That offensive line is a bit of a transition with some injuries along that line, but Brett Byford anchors it in the middle at the center spot. And some movement on that offensive line, and we'll tell you about it. A very experienced wide receiving core, purify none. And then Martin Lucky in that backfield along with J.B. Phillips, a tight end who saw considerable time last year for Nebraska. Huskers shift the formation on second and eight. Keller complete to Phillips just shy of the first down and Philip Dillard makes the tackle. He called Dillard twice to start this game. Here's a look at the white now they'll line up defensively Sullivan and Allen are the ends Martin and Johnson the tackles the linebackers are Kyle Moore Philip Dillard and Tyler Wharton. Armando Morello, interesting young man. We'll talk about a lot. He's a junior college transfer who got here mid-semester, so he is able to go through spring practice and has impressed the coaches so far. Third and well, they'll say he had just enough for the first down. So first and ten for the red. Straight hand off of the middle. And Matt, we're not going to see a lot of razzle dazzle today. It will be a, a basically a vanilla offense by both sides. Sure, offensively it's going to be pretty vanilla, and defensively it's just going to be a base over defense on the front with three deep in the secondary. That's pretty much what you're going to see all day. Already a nice ovation for Sam Keller as he took the field for the first snap of, the, of today's game. This crowd really excited to see who's going to lead this offense going into the fall. And that is Lydon Murtha who is being helped off the field and this is one thing all coaches dread about spring games do not get anybody hurt and Murtha's an interesting story played a lot of left tackle Matt last season they're moving him to the right side here in spring ball and that means Carl Nix is going to be at the left tackle position they really like Murtha over at the right side Greg they call him right handed so he's on the right side. And that's exactly what you don't want to see early in the game somebody being helped off to the side. But that brings us into the discussion that this Nebraska offensive line is extremely deep. They do have two or three guys not playing today, but they will be ready for the fall. In Nebraska, these coaches feel like going in to this season that they're going to have at least 10 offensive linemen that they feel pretty comfortable with going into any game. There's a look at Coach Gilmore, who's going to be kind of running the white squad today. The coordinators will basically handle the red squad and Sean Watson and Kevin Cosgrove and we do have a treat for you later in the broadcast as Bill Callahan's going to join us up here in the booth and talk about what he has seen from this vantage point which is different for a head coach. Sure I think it's important for him to, to see the game from up here and he can evaluate and, and assess the situation from the skybox and we'll be able to get his views. Keller fumbles the snap gets it back and then they'll blow the whistle so that he does not get tackled. And that will set up third and long as Tyler Workman. Grand Island, Nebraska, escorts him out of bounds. There's one of those things, you both alternating quarterbacks a lot in practice. You have to both be able to work on that center to quarterback exchange. Well, that's right. It's just one of those things that, you know, sometimes you take for granted the center quarterback exchange, but it's something that has to obviously start every single play, and they have had some struggles with that this spring. There's Sean Watson, first year as the offensive coordinator at Nebraska. Last year he was the tight ends coach. Third and nearly 10. Keller over the middle, complete to Purify for a first down and into light territory. Good protection that time for Keller and Purify on a crossing route makes the grab. And that's the strength of Sam Keller right there. He, he's very comfortable in the pocket. Gets into that drop. Has his eyes downfield and finds the big target down the middle. Maurice Purify, a guy that really emerged last year for Nebraska in this wide receiving core. And a guy that whoever is playing quarterback here this fall is going to love to use as a target with that big body. 17 yard pickup on the play. Second first down of the drive for the red. Keller play action. Looking downfield. Now we'll throw it away. One thing that Bill Callahan talked about us with us yesterday Matt was he was going to be evaluating decision making. If something's not there don't force it. There's an example of Keller just uh, flipping it out of bounds and getting second down set up. And that's experience. You don't want to throw an interception there. You just throw it out of bounds. Sam Keller only has one year to play here in Nebraska. But you see in this quarterback competition just the vast experience that Sam Keller has over Joey Gans. However Gans has been in this system for the last two years and he probably knows the offense at this point a little bit better than Sam Keller. Keller was on the scout team last year and that's where 
he really earned the respect of his teammates. Bill Callahan will talk about that a little bit more, but he, he really worked hard on the scout team, and so he's just now grasping this offense, the West Coast offense that Sean Watson and Bill Callahan have, have put in. It's Marta Lucky on the slip screen that time. Anthony West makes a tackle after a 15-yard pickup and a better first down for the Red. Marta Lucky has had an interesting offseason as well, had some health problems, but back up and going, and you believe set up for a pretty big... 2007 campaign. Well, expectations are through the roof for Marlon Lucky. Big time recruit out of California when he came to Nebraska two years ago. Now he'll be entering his third season and he's going to get the brunt of the load at the running back position. And Lucky on the handoff pushes forward for a couple. Ball carried by number 20, Marlon Lucky. And so the red marching down the field, working their way against this number two defense. And that's what you would, you would want to see in a game like this. You want to see your starting offense be able to go down the field, put some points on the board against the number two guys in the white team, and and you know show some excitement for these fans. All these all the fans come out today. They want to see some big plays and see who's going to be making plays for this team. Once the real games come around in September. Lucky that time and a nice play by Ricky Thanars who slipped through there. Thanars has been working at safety and some corner in the spring for Nebraska. He makes a nice stop on Lucky setting up another third down. Talented guy Ricky Thanars. He is not scared to come up and tag you. Didn't make a big hit there but he loves to come up and create contact. You're going to see some big collisions in this game today. People fighting for positions. Keller finds Purify again for another first down. Nick Covey, one of the linebackers, makes a stop of the play for the white squad, but Purify has been a favorite target early on here for Sam Keller. Purify last year entering the season, didn't understand the offense a whole lot. Had only been on campus for a couple of months before the season started. But as the season progressed and he learned more of this offense, he became a bigger part of things, ended up leading the team in receiving yards in 2006. 12 yard gain in the play. Keller on first and 10 over the middle. Pass caught by Terrence Nunn, and that is a touchdown for the Red Squad. What a drive engineered by Sam Keller, who goes five of six on that drive, and a strike over the middle that time to Terrence Nunn. That's just what the doctor ordered for these Nebraska fans. They wanted to see this offense. Expectations so high with so many returning players on this offense that are able to make plays down the field. Terrence Nunn being one of those guys. Little dig route across the middle. Keller threw a bullet. And his first touchdown pass, albeit in a scrimmage in front of what looks to be at least 60,000 fans here in Memorial Stadium today. Alex Henry to try the point after. That's up and through, and the Red Squad goes 73 yards in 11 plays. A touchdown with Keller hooking up with none, and the Red leads it 7 0. You're watching the Nebraska Red White scrimmage here on the NFL Network. Impressive drive by the Red. 73 yards took just under four minutes and pretty impressive as Sam Keller. Matt, I thought looked very comfortable out there running that squad. And that's what you'd expect from a guy that, that's been in big time situations for a lot of these players. A big advantage Nebraska has being able to draw this many fans into the stadium and make it a real game-like atmosphere. A lot of guys haven't been in this situation before. Sam Keller has played in big games. You would expect him to not be intimidated at all by the situation and come out and, and play well today. And that was a well-engineered drive. He did look extremely comfortable in the pocket. Again, over 60,000 on hand here today. It's one of the amazing stories in college football every year is what kind of crowd Nebraska will attract for spring football games. And what a big advantage. Recruiting-wise, 75 recruits here today for Nebraska on campus, able to see the excitement that this state has for their football team with a game not for months down the road. Here's the short kick. Franz Hardy takes it at the 13. Gets to the sideline and pushed out of bounds. And that's the White will take over and around their own 28-yard line. And the White will be quarterbacked by junior Bo Davis. Who Sean Watson said has really improved. And they liked what he has done throughout the spring. 
6 4, 180 pound junior out of Venice, California. So he will engineer the white squad. Again, this will be working against the number one defense for Nebraska on the red. We'll see if Bo Davis gets time to throw. He throws a pretty football. He's watching him in warm ups. But will he have time against this starting defense? Goes downfield trying to hit Franz Hardy. Nice tip away by Andre Jones that time. Offensively, the white will look like this today. And again, they'll be moving people in and out. They're really impressed with Jordan PQ, who can also play some center along that offensive line. And DJ Jones is a guy who still could be working his way toward the number one squad. Josh Muter now standing tight end. And Major Colbert will be the eye back on this white squad. And he was a former defensive back that they've converted over to the eye back spot here in spring and has picked it up nicely. Looks very comfortable back there at eye back. Played safety last year as a freshman. Play action fake, Davis. And a flag comes out. Davis scrambles out of bounds. Line judge makes the call for holding on the defense. Speaking of the defense, here's how the number one unit for the Huskers, the Black Shirts, as they are known here in Lincoln. Seavers and Potter are the end. Stein Cooler and Sue are the tackles. Rude, McEwen, and Octavian. Boy, that's the rock of this defense is that linebacking court. Jones and Grigsby are the corners. Green and Wilson are the safeties. Kevin Cosgrove is going to be called in the signals along that red sideline for that. Fourth year's defensive coordinator here in Lincoln. The defense once again will be playing very much a base defense all day long. Over front with cover three, three deep. Holding Penley pushes the ball out to the 46. Davis off to Major Colbert. Makes a man miss. Slithers across midfield. Picks up about five on the play as Grigsby and Octavian make the tackle. Colbert, not a big target when you come up to make the hit. And hides behind that offensive line and able to squirt through there for a pretty nice game. Harbor City, California natives. A number of California players on this Nebraska squad. Nebraska's done a really good job recruiting the West Coast. Second and five. Colbert this time hit the backfield and thrown to the turf is Indomitian Sue makes that tackle. There's a guy who's going to be counted on to, to fill one of those gaps you talked about in the open, Matt, about Nebraska having to replace all four defensive linemen. You see him just go right through the gap there. And when he gets his hands on somebody, normally they're not going to get away. Just a big man. Damakong Su, a lot of high expectations for this guy. And even though Nebraska did lose all of their front four from last year's team, Greg, Su was a guy that played a lot of snaps last year and could have easily been a starter. So they don't feel like they're downgrading at all with Su getting the starting nod going into the fall. Third and 10 for the White. Davis. Lost a pass up. And it falls incomplete. It was some contact downfield. No flag thrown as Jones and Hardy clip legs. And White will be forced to punt. Down 7 nothing to the red. That was good coverage in the secondary. Experience at the cornerback position with Courtney Grigsby, Andre Jones, two covered corners that went pretty well last year for Nebraska, and they expect big things out of them going into this fall again. Michael Such will punt. He's out of Allen, Texas. Andre Jones is back deep, and again, this is what they'll call mock. No rushing to the punter, and fair catch is to be called by the receiver. Punt returns, and this is the phase of game where you do risk some injuries, and thus you don't want to do that in the spring contest. So that will go through the back of the end zone, and the red will take it out to the 20. Well, and these guys work on the kicking game a lot just because they're not doing live punt coverage. And Punt return, kickoff, kick return. That, that doesn't mean that they're not practicing it a lot throughout the spring. And then obviously they'll hit it hard again once two days get here in August. Well, we'll see Joe Gant this series, the 6'1 junior. 
And we we tried yesterday to pin Coach Callahan down on who would be the number one guy, but he he did not blink. So Joe Gans now will get a series with Cody Glenn as eye back. Back to throw. In the flat. Good, good collision hit. Thomas Lawson, the fullback, slipped out of the backfield to make that catch for a first down for the Red Squad. Well, Gans, a backup last year to Zach Tater, didn't get a lot of playing time, and probably the most memorable moment that he had last season, and Husker fans will remember this, came in that Colorado game at the end of the season when they ran a fake field goal. It was snapped to him, and he threw it downfield to, of all people, a big goal defensive end, Barry Turner, for a touchdown. How about that play? Yeah, that was an exciting play, and even though only 13 career pass attempts for Gans, the players and everyone around this program knows he's very capable. Him and Keller pretty much split the, the reps with the ones in the spring 50-50 for all 15 practices this fall, or this spring. Cody Glenn on the carry that time. The tackle was made by Ben Eisenhart. Cody Glenn, a little bit more physical back than Marlon Lucky. Bigger, about 20 pounds. Can run it between the tackles maybe a little bit better. But a nice kind of combination back to go along with Lucky in that backfield. He's the guy that's going to get the ball when it's third and one, third and two. Can really fight for that extra yard or two when you really need it. First and ten for the red out near midfield. Gans down the field. Pass is dropped by Nate Swift. Unusual for Nate to not haul in the catch. He had 22 receptions a year ago. You can see the, the great footwork. Joey Gans been in this offense now, entering his third year. A little bit low, but obviously a pass that needs to be hauled in at this level for Nathan Swift. Nice big target. When coaches go back to grade the film, that would probably be go down as a reception or a completion, I should say, for Gans because it was a clear drop. Sure, the numbers don't always tell the story when you look at if a guy was 10 for 12 or 10 for 15 you know, with a touchdown and no picks. You know, was that as good a day as the other guy who maybe the numbers didn't stack up as well, but how many drops did he have? Uh, was there an interception that was dropped? It could have been an inter in a turnover the other direction. So uh, it's not just about the numbers. So when people look tomorrow at the stats from this game today and they look at Joey Gans and Sam Keller, maybe the numbers just don't tell the tale. Third and 10 here for the red and for Joe Gans. He's in the shotgun. Over the middle. Caught. First down. Pulled in by J.B. Phillips. His second catch of the day. And a pick up on the play of 12 yards for a red first down. Maybe one of the differences between these two quarterbacks, you look at Gans in the pocket, about six feet tall. The coaches call him crafty. He's able to extend the life of plays in a lot of in a lot of ways with his feet. Maybe a little more versatile, can run the ball a little bit better maybe than Sam Keller. But not as big a presence in the pocket. So he has to maneuver his way through the pocket a little differently and find those passing lanes. He did that there and found J.B. Phillips down the field. Cody Glenn scoots to the outside. Flag does come down a play. And the white hat makes a call and might have a hole in the corner. And that's another thing that as a coaching staff you look at today and you really want it to be a clean game. You don't want it to be a situation where you get sloppy offensively or defensively with silly penalties. It's all about a mentality. You want to practice with discipline. So when you get into games you don't even have to think about it. Just react and play and and understand the way that you're supposed to go out there and execute. Not put yourself in situations where you kill a drive with a holding call or you extend the life of a, of a drive of an offense by having a silly defensive penalty. And that hold was called on DJ Jones who flipped to the red squad when Murtha went down with an injury early on. And Jones is a guy they think has a lot of talent there at the right tackle position. Cody Glenn with the catch in the flat. Good pursuit with a white short gain in the play. A little popping of the pads going on down there. 
Well, yeah, this is a fun day for Nebraska fans and for everybody to be able to see this game. But on the field, there's a lot of competition going on. These guys know when they come out of spring and they see the depth chart, and they see wherever it is that they fall in line. It's very important going into training camp in August. They want to position themselves for more playing time. Obviously, now this is the time for them to, in a game-like situation to impress their coaches. So there's a lot of competition going on out there. They're having a lot of fun, too. But at the same time, they're trying to win a job. Second and 12. Ball at the white 41. Gans on the shotgun. Lucky is in the backfield with him. Over the middle again, crossing route, big gain. Swift for a first down inside the 20. So Swift, who had a drop earlier in this drive, hangs on to that one and Brought down by picks up 27 yards. Kyle Moore makes the tackle. Another one of those vintage plays of the West Coast offense. Short crossing route. Swift will come into your screen from the right side, gets bumped by the linebacker, continues across the field. Gans threw a nice ball there. Went right back to Swift after the drop. That's what you want to do. Get your playmakers the ball. If they make a mistake, have a drop. Get it right back to them. Get that confidence back. Lucky. Waiting for the blocks and the hole to open. Kind of picks his way forward for five on first down. Another fairly impressive drive. and Well-balanced play calling. The run of the pass. You look at all the guys that have touched the ball already in this offense, and that's why people are excited about this Nebraska offense. They ranked 14th in the country last year in total offense. Guys like Marlon Lucky, Maurice Purify, Swift, Nunn, J.B. Phillips, all these guys were starters and played a lot last year, and they're all back. That makes whoever wins this quarterback position, they're going to have a lot to work with, a veteran-laden offense, and people have high expectations for this team in the fall. Should be able to score a lot of points. We mentioned Sam Keller was 5 of 6 on the first drive. Joe Gans is 5 of 6 on this drive. He scrambles out of the pocket. Looking. Will tuck it. Dive. Touchdown. Joe Gans showing those feet of his. Able to make a play running the football. And that time the dive. And that's really where the defense, man, a little bit of a disadvantage because they're told don't hit the guy with the green, <laughs> the green jersey. But what a nice play by Gans, a 10-yard touchdown run. Yeah, maybe not a game-like situation at the end of this play. And as a defensive player, that's frustrating. Gans uses those, uses those legs, goes diving into the end zone. You can see a couple of the guys with the white shirts on. They don't believe he would have made the goal line, but you see there a little bit more athleticism from Joey Gans once he gets out of the pocket. Alex Henry's point after try is through the uprights, and it is 14-0 red, an 80-yard drive at 10 plays, engineered by Joe Gans, as he makes his case to be the starting quarterback for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. 14-0, the red with the advantage here in Lincoln. Nothing red two times they've had the football both times have ended up with touchdowns as both quarterbacks have led a drive Sam Keller and Joe Gans as we welcome you back to Lincoln Nebraska Nebraska's red white spring finale short kick Franz Hardy will collect it at the 11 to the 20 and across the 30 brought down by Andy Pulowski makes a tackle well both guys have quarterback one series Sam Keller had the first series Joe Gans the second series both touchdowns and when you look at the numbers can't get much closer than that <laughs> pretty efficient obviously in this offense you would expect these guys to go down the field against the number two defense it's going to be a tough decision for this coaching staff no doubt about it they love the competition and they're in no hurry to name a starting quarterback they think it's all going to play out throughout the, the summer and fall camp. Now quarterbacking for the White is Patrick Witt, whose pass is deflected, but then caught by Marcus Mendoza. And that, Matt, is true freshman to true freshman. These are two guys who left, finished up their high school careers in December, enrolled at Nebraska in January, and as Sean Watson told us yesterday, these are two guys who ought to be worried about their prom date, not worried about what formation to get the team into. <laughs> yeah, and it's becoming more of a trend now for these High school seniors to try to get their credits in, get done early at semester as a senior. And what a big advantage to be able to come into spring ball and be able to be involved in a, in a big time program 
and he should still be in high school. And Bill Callahan really impressed with Patrick Witt. He said for a guy that's only a senior in high school, really, be able to come in here and absorb this offense because they're throwing everything at these quarterbacks. They're not just implementing a little bit of the offense here and there. They picked up where they left off the end of last fall with the offense. Everything is installed and Patrick Witt has come in and they are really impressed with this guy physically and mentally. He's been able to soak everything up. He is from Wiley, Texas. 6'4", 220 pounder. He has third in about 11 here on this play. A little slant pattern. Trying to get to Hardy. It slapped away. Bo Rude was on the defense that time and so it'll be a three and out for Patrick Witt in the white squad but imagine that three or four months ago you're you're in high school and now you're playing in front of 60,000 fans in Nebraska and these are great examples of guys that get a game like atmosphere in a scrimmage Stuart Bradley sidelines here today getting ready for the NFL draft standout linebacker last year for Nebraska Bradley believes his stock has been going up in the NFL we'll hear more about that at halftime this is Michael Such his second punt first one traveled 54 yards and a nice roll here and again mock is what they're saying for punt today no rush on the punter and no return for either side and so the Red will take over late first quarter 309 to go they're up 14 to nothing and if uh, order holds it'll go back to Sam Keller to quarterback this series for the red squad. Looks like it will be Sam Keller in the huddle. Keller back out there for his second set of downs. Young man, six foot four. He, both he and Gans trying to replace Zach Taylor. Zach did such a tremendous job here in Lincoln for two years. Sam's a much bigger guy than Zach Taylor. Zach was pushing six foot. Zach about six four. Nice pass complete to Peterson. Down across midfield. Still on his feet. And it's on the 35 yard line. Good throw and catch that time from Keller to Peterson. Prime example there of the experience of Sam Keller showing through. You'll see the pump fake to the right side of the field. Back to the other seam. Todd Peterson there makes a nice catch. You'll see a big block come in here from the right side, right there by Nathan Swift. And that's the injury we have there right now. Nebraska looks at the injured player on the field. Colton Keller is the injured Husker a linebacker out of Harvard Nebraska is being attended to by the Nebraska training staff. And again this is where coaches hold their breath. We already saw Leiden Murtha big offensive lineman limp off earlier in the game. And you see Swift standing there. You know that's one of those things you know you, you never want to play timid. You can't ever coach your players to ever be timid or to lay off of a hit. And so you see that's a clean block. His head is in front. It was just a big hit. Looks like he's going to go off under his own his own power. That's good to see. I, I sometimes those hits you don't see it just really gives you that whiplash effect. Looks like he's going to be OK. We talked about spreading the ball around earlier Matt. How about eight different receivers have had a catch already in the first quarter of this game. That's really what this offense is all about spreading it around going different places with the ball depending on what the defense gives you. Pitch to Lucky. And he's close to a first down. Little option pitch. Sam Keller. USC starting quarterback in two, or against USC in 2005. Threw for 347 yards that day. A couple of touchdowns, but he also threw five picks in that game against the Trojans. Was on his way to a record-breaking season, then had a hand injury that curtailed that campaign. He ended up throwing for 2,100 yards and transfers after Matt. He was named on a Friday as the starting quarterback for next year in a heated competition with Carpenter at ASU. Dick Cutter, the coach, had a change of heart over the weekend. Switched his decisions as you're watching Martin Lucky down the sideline and inside the five. 
Keller then thinking, well, I'm behind a guy who's got more eligibility than me. I want to go somewhere where I can play my final year. Calls an old friend of Bill Callahan and ends up here in Lincoln. Yeah, a really good story how Sam Keller got here to Lincoln, Nebraska. And with only one year to play, yeah, that was going to be tough for him to start the season as the backup, especially when he had been named the starter. And then it got taken away from him and just a really odd situation. And so he comes here with one year of eligibility and a pro-like body, a pro-like arm. Really adds a lot of depth at quarterback for Nebraska. Lucky had a 23-yard gain to get it to the one, and now a touchdown for the Red Squad. So three drives, three scores. Marna Lucky gets in there for a rushing touchdown. And with that drive, you saw big chunks of yardage, and I think that's something this coaching staff is really going to stress to these guys. Let's get big chunks of yardage. Yes, we want to control the clock and move our way down the field, but... Boy, it's a lot easier on yourselves when you get big chunks of yards, and Marlon Lucky there able to squeeze through a little gap, climb in there for the touchdown. Henry with the point after, up and through, and 2.21 left to go first quarter. It's 21-0, the red with the lead over the wide, and you're right, all kinds of big gains on that play. They go 81 yards in four plays to score that touchdown in less than a minute. Well, two weeks from today, Join the NFL Network to see who your favorite team is going to select in this year's NFL Draft. Complete NFL Draft coverage April 29th, 28th, 29th on the NFL Network. You saw Stuart Brandon earlier here today. Adam Carricker, another guy who's going to get his name called. Brandon Jackson, another guy who get picked out of the Husker program. Jay Moore, one of the rush ins from last year's front four. He will go the first day in the draft. There you see Sam Keller talking to Lydon Murtha, who looks like his day is over. They've taken the pads off Murtha. And you just love to see that out of out of your quarterback, a guy that is over there, you know, talking to a guy that's disappointed right now, has his ankle wrapped up, but maybe not, hopefully not a, a serious injury. You want to see your quarterbacks be socialites on the sidelines. You want them over there talking to these guys and. Let them know they're the, they're the leader of the team, and Sam Keller has really earned the respect of his team, of this team, for only being here now for less than a year. Well, and that's what, you know, you talk about the intrinsic values. Zach Taylor was so good at that. He had such a command in the locker room as this kick taken by Fenaris at about the 18. Ricky to the near side. And gets it out across the 35. You have to develop those leadership skills. And I think that's a great example of some good shots by our crew to find him over there consoling a guy whose day is done. Joey Gans also a really popular guy on this team has been around for three years and somebody that everybody on the team knows is very capable of getting the job done. Bo Davis will quarterback this series again for the white. As whistles blow, I think they will stop play there and keep the quarterback from getting getting hit. And so coming up on the two-minute mark of this first quarter, 21 nothing the red with the lead. Bo Rood will get credited with the tackle. The linebacking core on the defense is really the staple. They supply a lot of the leadership, not only for the defense, but for this whole football team. This season, Steve Octavian, big things expected out of him this fall. Bo Rood, Corey McEwen. Bo Davis down, pass. West Kamak trying to make the catch. Brian Wilson there to knock it loose. Good pressure up front by the defensive line. Shakri Barfield in there. He's another one of those December signees, Matt, who Got here in time for the second semester and for spring ball. Junior college player played his junior college ball at Garden City, and they're high on that young man. And he's really going to, I think, add some depth to that defensive line. Had a really good spring, and that's you know, what you really want out of that front four. Get pressure on the quarterback. It makes your secondary look awfully good when you get pressure on a quarterback. 
The slant pattern tipped up in the air. Here comes the tip drill in play, and it is picked off by the red as Andre Jones has the pick along the near sideline. Boy, what a play by the corner. Andre Jones was there to make the hit. The ball popped up in the air. He's able to keep his wits and find the ball up in the air and come down with a pick. Andre last year had one interception during the year. Pass was intended for Will Henry. Henry is asking for a flag there as the ball was in the air. <laughs> you need to kind of let the play finish and then do that, right? <laughs> That's a trick you all wide receivers all come up with, huh? Always expecting a flag. Shouldn't ever expect it, but as a wide receiver, you always want one. Joe Gans back out to quarterback this series for the Red. As we're late the first quarter, he'll have Cody Glenn off to his left side. Gans looking downfield, passes up, and it's, did Swift pull it in? Yes, he did. What a catch. Boy, nice catch in between two defensive backs. Nice throw by Gans right down the seam. 28-yard pickup of the play as you watch it again. Shows the accuracy. Once again, 6'2", 210 pounds. Swift is able to go up and get balls like that, come down with it. These quarterbacks have playmakers at the skilled positions. Swift second catch, 55 yards. Gans has to just go to a knee after the snap at the 15-yard line. It's a second gobbled snap so far. You know that's something that just takes repetition. Got to take care of the ball. Nebraska last year tied 58th in the country in turnover margin. Look at that's something that I definitely want to improve on this year. Sean Watson will look there as he checks over his notes. Both quarterbacks have had a, a snap slip through their mitts. Gann steps up, flips, swift, touchdown. And that's what Joey Gans can bring to this offense. He extends the plays in a lot of ways with his feet, with his legs. He's a crafty guy in the pocket, having a little fun. You won't see that in a, in a game this fall, I don't think, but <laughs> Gans steps up in the pocket. A little sidearm throw to Swift, who's been all over the place in this first quarter. Make, should make it 28 to nothing here after the extra point. Henry, who's been in a battle this spring for the place kicking job, a perfect four for four here in the first quarter on point after attempt. So 22 seconds left in the opening quarter. The way this will be formatted today, talk about some of the rules. It'll be a normal first half with clock stoppages, but they will run the clock in the second half, Matt. Speed this thing, speed the game along a little bit. Also, limit the number of times you could possibly have a, an injury case. That drive 40 yards, three plays, and get a very efficient drive. I think the coaches at halftime will look and evaluate the number of snaps that, that they've gotten, how many reps have they gotten in the first half, and when they go in at halftime, they'll talk about that and see what they really want to get out of the second half. The red team, obviously, the, the starters, projected starters, the guys at the top of the depth chart. Offensively and defensively, 37 guys on the red squad starting the, the day, 44 guys on the white squad, so 81 players participating today. And then another 10 or 12 guys that are injured that are on the team and available this spring, but it, but it won't be available today because of injury. 284 yards of offense for the red in the first quarter. Four times they've had the football and four drives that have ended up in touchdowns. Mendoza and Benares are back deep for the white. And an emphasis is going to have to be put on special teams in a lot of ways, as always with coaches, but now with the kicking off from the 30 yard line, you're going to see a lot more possession starting outside the 20, 25 yard line. So kickoff coverage is going to become a point of emphasis for a lot of coaching staffs. That was Marcus Mendoza, that uh, true freshman running back who brought that kick back. He has outstanding speed. In fact, he's been clocked at 10-3 in the 100. We talked about some injuries in the spring. Zach Bowman, one of their top corners, 
injured a knee. He'll be out until the start of the season. And Kenny Wilson has been lost for the year. And then a couple of those offensive linemen that we've talked about, Huff and Christensen, who are not able to compete today in the spring game. This is Patrick Witt, whistleblow, and he'll be down at the 17 yard line. There's a sack will be credited to Clayton Seavers, the Elkhorn, Nebraska product, on uh, what will be the final play of the first quarter. 28 nothing. the Red with the lead. Four times they've had the ball, four times they've scored. Both quarterbacks, Keller and Gans, have led the offense to two touchdowns on their two drives so far in this game in Lincoln. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. The Red with a 28 nothing advantage over the White as we're ready to start the second quarter of play. And we're gonna look, we told you we had a special treat lined up for you today as we welcome you back. Greg Sharp, Matt Davison, and head coach Bill Callahan. Well, it's good to have you up here with us. Good to be here. A little different vantage point for you up here. Absolutely. It's the first time in about eight years that I went up in the box. Is that right? You were able to see four nice touchdown drives there in the first quarter. That doesn't make you happy. Absolutely. And I think both quarterbacks have performed well in the first quarter. So this is really a surprise to me they have 28 points on the board already some good action going on here the white has the ball pass over the middle complete near a first down and there's one of your freshman quarterbacks Patrick Witt, with a pretty nice throw there. really nice this is a little uh, crossing route Greg we just have a box route as we call it it's a good middle read out of the mesh by by Patrick Witt. just an outstanding young man a lot of upside just a true true freshman a high school player that came to us at mid-year nice presence in the pocket big kid can really see over the offensive line no question he's very smart he's handled his offense well all spring Matt. he's he's a guy that has great upside as you can see his command at the line of scrimmage his ability to manage all the motions and shifts we have in and then execute the base plays he does an excellent job Major Colbert that time not able to pick up the first down as Steve Octavian makes the tackle. We talked you talked about both quarterbacks look well look at their first quarter numbers almost identical six to seven for Sam and Joe is seven of eight pretty much how we thought it was going to be. <laughs> Nobody can make a determination yet so we'll see how it plays out here in the second quarter but uh, we've got a lot of a lot of upside of both these guys and they've done extremely well in their preparation and their performance has been just magnificent today. Well it's going to be a great competition through the rest of the summer and into training camp whoever does win that job gets a lot of veterans on the offensive side of the football. No question and, and Matt we have another young quarterback by the name of Zach Lee that came to us from San Francisco City College which would also who should also be in the competition as well. Punt down inside the 10 so the red will be backed up a little bit for this drive here up 28 nothing that was a 59 yard punt by Michael Such. You have your wants working against the rest of the team with the red unit here and so you you would expect you would hope that your your ones would be able to move the ball like they have today. Well the execution is so important and they've they've done a great job all spring long in that in that capacity but now you know we're, we're up backed up a little bit on the 10 yard line so we'll see what these guys can do managing their way out of the hole. And off to Cody Glenn. Short gain across the 10. Last year, Coach, four, four running backs that everybody felt really good about. And as you come into today, Brandon Jackson goes to the NFL draft. Kenny Wilson is out today with an injury. So you have still Marlon Lucky and Cody Glenn. Talk maybe about some of the other guys they're going to add to that mix. Well, we have a young guy by the name of Marcus Mendoza and a young freshman by the name of Major Culbert have worked extremely hard and have added to the mix. And we're looking forward to a lot of good things from those two players, as well as two recruits that we took, one out of California by the name of Roy Halu and another one, Quinn Castile, out of LaPorte, Texas. So it'll be interesting. Uh, as we get into training camp and we decide on roles and, and plays for these guys. Keller with a nice hook up with Todd Peterson that time. There's a look at some of that running back competition and you've got Major Colbert who you moved over from the defensive side of the ball to offense and then Marcus Mendoza the freshman who came in here and he's impressed your coaching staff. He sure has. He has the explosive speed that we look for Greg. He's a guy that could be a role player on third downs. He can catch the ball well. He'll be he'll be in addition to our return game and uh, he's just going to be a real quality role player because he has the speed that can compete in this conference. Keller and Peterson Todd doing a nice job of staying on his feet. Knocked out of bounds by Tyler Kester. Talk about 
why Sam Keller made sense for you to bring him here. One year of eligibility left. Talk about uh, your, your history with the family a little bit and having Sam here on campus and part of the program. Well, first off, we had somewhat of a void in our quarterback situation with the, with the loss of Harrison Beck transferring to North Carolina. We felt strongly about bringing in another player, and it just worked out as such where you know Sam was available. You know, he wanted to transfer, and he looked at a lot of different schools, selected Nebraska because of the type of system that we have here. So for any young quarterback out there that wants to be part of a pro system, uh, this is the place to be, and this is why he selected Nebraska. When you look at the menu that Sam Keller brings to the table here, talk a little bit about his tools. Uh, big arm, looks like an NFL quarterback, fits well in this offense. He sure does. And you look at his size, he's 6'5", he's 230 pounds, he moves extremely well. Uh, he's really a mobile guy and has good athleticism. He's intelligent, he has a strong arm and a very quick release. And uh, those are all the things we look for. And most importantly, he's a smart guy, he's dependable in terms of managing the offense. Now last year, ran with the scout team most of the time in the fall. Talk a little bit about how he's able to then absorb this offense and really take it all on and, and where does he stand right now as far as understanding the offense? How, how comfortable do you feel right now with where he's coming from? Uh, we feel very confident in terms of his understanding uh, and management of what we're doing. You know, he was in every quarterback meeting last year with Coach Norvell, and he really picked up the system, you know, pretty fast. And there's a lot of carryover from where he was at a year ago. That's a great catch here by Maurice Purifier. Just, I mean, he can demonstrate the ability to throw the ball long, short. But in a nutshell, man, you know, the thing about Sam that's attractive is that he's an unselfish guy. He worked with the scout team all last year, was the offensive scout team player of the year, and also did his part in preparing just like any other quarterback would in our offense. So there's a lot of credit that has to be given to his preparation. That's a 36-yard pickup by Maurice Purify. We, in our open of our broadcast, coach, we showed his catch against Texas A&M to win that game, and he, he has the ability to make those plays for your offense. He sure does. He's got the big wide receiver size that you look for, big body, a guy that can elevate and use his body to position himself between the DB and the ball. And that's the most impressive thing about his play, Greg, is that he can elevate and he can make the tough catch, the third down grab, or as you saw, the play that's contested against tight coverage. He can go up and make that type of play for us. Ricky Finarch with a nice play for the white defense that time to keep the red out of the end zone. It'll be second down and goal here. Coach, when you get into these situations, you have to feel pretty good right now with this offensive line and how you you hopefully are going to be able to pound the ball into the end zone at this in this situation. A negative play there, but now second and five from the five yard line. It's nice to have that big, strong offensive line up front. No question. And then here we have a little G handoff. It should score right here, which it does. But you're right, Matt. You've got to get into these situations and sequences that you practice time and time again. And we devote a lot of time to goal line and short yardage. Just about every day we hit that area of play. And so our players, got, they have great exposure to it. And so when it comes to executing in a critical situation, they know their assignments and they can cut it loose. So Cody Glenn finds the end zone. Martin Lucky had scored earlier, so both eyebacks on the red have now scored a touchdown in this game as Alex Henry will try to add the point after attempt here and it is up and through the uprights 35 to nothing the Red with an 8 10 26 to go in this opening half we'll be back with more with coach Callahan as the Huskers red squad on top here in Lincoln. Back to Lincoln, 35 nothing the red, which is the number one unit for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Lead the white. We're in the second quarter. Around 60,000 fans have turned out to watch the Nebraska spring game here today. We're delighted to be able to bring it to you. Red will be kicking off. Mendoza and Thanars deep for the white. Coach, how do you see it changing the games this year with the kickoff being from the 30-yard line as opposed to the 35-yard line? I think it's a dramatic difference. As you can tell right now, the ball has been short on just about every kickoff. No longer will you see those kicks being t beat so that, that percentage of plays has been decreased, in my opinion. Okay, Ted, we're going to go zebra here. Okay, let's go to play number 33. This is zebra personnel, Trey right, wide left, 99 Willie. Greg and, and Matt, this is a play out of our three wide, uh, one tight end personnel grouping. We're going to put the tight end in motion coming down towards us into the near boundary. This is a little zone play, outside stretch play here. 
to number four, Metal League hold side. So you'll see the tight end coming left. You'll see the ball run to the uh, offensive formation left. It's a pure zone stretch play. The back is going to try to find holders oh, backside penetration, but Marcus does an excellent job of bouncing the ball outside. This is going to be about a second and five situation. Ted, we're going to go zebra personnel again, please. Okay, we're going to go 48 opposite here, Ted. 48 opposite. This is 300 Jet Z stick spacing. This is a little three step route that we're going to run off of our three step protection. It's a stick concept. And what that is, is the inside receiver, he's going to run a route about six yards deep. We're going to try to feature him. I think they're a little bit confused here on the formation, but we're going to try to hit the inside receiver on this play. Let's see how it works out. It's just a real quick throw, quick route. We're going to try to bang the ball into the flat. The inside receiver was covered, and we went outside. This is third down, Ted. Okay, do this for me, Ted. Let's go Eagle personnel, please. This is play 58. 58, Ted. This will be out of the shotgun with, with Bo Davis here. In this formation, it's trips right gun. We call this 72 double under X out. And what's going to be fun about this play, you'll see the two wide receivers up top, 26 and 83. They're going to push to about six yards and come inside. And you're going to see the number three wide receiver run a cross route. And down there at the bottom, you're going to see an out. Let's see how it develops here. A little push, harassment, sack on the play. Yeah, there, and there's a look at Steve Octavian, who you could certainly move him around a little bit. He's a weapon that you You're have right, not right. been able to use a lot the last couple what's, of years. What's fun about his abilities is that you can position him just about anywhere, either in the middle or outside on the edge, and let him come off and put heat on the quarterback. He's got that type of flexibility in his game where he can rush the passer, play coverage, play standard and static yeah. you know, in his alignment. But he's an outstanding player with great, great offense. The linebackers on this red squad going to be the starters and, and the staple of this defense, really. A lot, of, a lot of experience there at the linebacking core. That's always nice for a defense. That's certainly. You got Corey McEwen, number 13, Bo Root, 51. And the, kind of the unsung hero of that whole group is Lance Brandenburg, number 40. So it's a very solid core. And we got some young players coming in like Blake Lawrence out of Kansas City that will really add to the depth. You were talking to Ted, then, uh, Ted Gilmore. Yes. Right on the sideline, who is kind of running your white squad here today. Okay, Sean, you got me here? Okay, we're going to go regular personnel here. Okay, we got the ball right here at the 21. You're going to put it on the left middle hash, Sean. We're going to go 13 opposite. Okay. Greg, this is an isolation play that we're trying to run here to the wide field. And we're going to let the fullback try to isolate on the Mike linebacker. Sean Watson, your offensive coordinator. Okay. Things for You'll him. see the fullback here. He's going to try to get it, get himself positioned on the Mike linebacker. The line, the line is going to zone block here, and then there's a great cutback lane on the backside off a double team. It's really well done. We got a second and two here, Sean. Okay, we're going to go zebra personnel here. Okay. We're going to go 52, Sean. Number 52, please. Second and two is a nice situation for an offense. It is. And, you know, you can run or throw. We're, we're going to like to throw here a little bit. And this is what we call 200 Jet Lion. It's just there's double slant routes on both sides. Uh, really trying to look at, and try to work the outside lane on this particular play, away from the flow of the back. Let's see where he goes. He's going outside left. There's the slant route right there. It's a big pickup, first and 10. Okay, let's go back and pound it a little bit, Sean. Okay, let's come back. Let's go to Tiger personnel here. Let's go to 21, please. This is an interesting play because it's a trap play by the off tight end in what we call a, a east formation where the inside tight end, as you'll see here coming up, he's positioned off the ball and inside. He's going to come inside and trap the nose tackle to the center's left. And the back is going to read off it. Let's take a look and see how it works. There's a trap. The back takes the backside cut of the trap. He picks up two yards. So we're going to be second and uh, three yards. We're, we're second and seven, Sean, on the left hash. Let's go to Tiger one more time. We'll keep that person on the game. Play 61, please. This is a little five-step route that we call a Hank route. Really, really a basic, generic West Coast play where you have in routes or hook routes on the outside lane. The tight end will be over the ball. You see the back here that's offset, Marlon Lucky, 
will shoot right to the flat here about two to three yards on the boundary and you'll see the other tight end do the same and you'll see the wide tight end on the ball try to work a hook route. So it looks like uh, five of looks like the five on the dice. We elect to take the in just missed throw it inside. OK we're third and seven coach. Okay. Let's go to zebra personnel here. Let's go to 81 opposite Sean. Again, we're joined by Nebraska head coach Bill Callahan. You're hearing him throw the play down to the sideline and Sean Watson right now. This is a play we call 73 X bingo wide corner. And you're going to see a stack formation down here towards us with Mo Purify. You're going to see Mo Purify take a scissors release inside. He's going to run a basic cross. And then we've got a post over the top with the outside receiver. And there's a little shallow cross. But you see Mo wide open. We couldn't get him. And so we like to scramble. Great creative play by Joe Gans. Very well done on the scramble. And as we hear you call these plays, Coach, we hear Zebra, Eagle, um, all these different personnel settings. Okay, Sean, we're going to go regular. Yes, it is. And, that, and that's really what the West Coast offense is about. It really is. It's, it's multiplicity as well. Let's go to one opposite here, Coach. You like that ability of Joe to make that kind of play, don't you? And he has the ability to do that, Greg. That's one of his strengths, is to, his ability to roll out of the pocket and create plays with his feet. And he's got good avoidance in the pocket. He's a good feel and presence. And when he, when he feels that pressure, he knows how to avoid and escape and make plays with his, on his feet. What are we going to see here? A little draw play to our left here. A little isolation draw block. It's wide open. There's a cut off the outside by Marlin. It's a good pickup. Should be either second and short or first and ten. Okay, let's try to throw it in here. We're in the red zone here. Right on the red zone fringe, as we call it. Let's go 124 opposite, Sean, out of Zebra personnel. Zebra! This is a bunch play that we scored on earlier. Red team, ball on the 21. And what you'll see here is you'll see, you'll see a bunch formation. You see three wide receivers to the left. And on the snap of the ball, the outside receiver is going to run a crossing route inside. The inside receiver is going to run a little pivot route to try to hold the linebackers. And then the inside receiver, number 85, J.B. Phillips, is going to work to the flat. And down here at the bottom, we have a little out route. And Marlon will check out wide. And there's Terrence Nunn coming across the middle. And there's the play. Okay. Drop. Okay, we're second and ten. We're going to have you call one more play. Okay, right. last one here. Last time we have fun. Let's have some fun with this. Let's see if we can get a touchdown to Terrence Nunn here. Let's go to Tiger personnel. 129. 129, please. Brings up second down and 10. This has always been a favorite to play in the West Coast system, the double post. And what you're going to see is the outside receiver run a post. The inside receiver runs a, a post that's a little bit skinnier to try to attract the safety and pull him into the isolation up top. So we're going to try to hit Terrence with the ball in the post. You'll see the outside receiver run a flat route and should be able to thread that throw right there. Just overthrown slightly. You know, you, we talked about Mo Go Purify, different kind of a, a receiver. Terrence gives you a little bit of that vertical speed to get it down. I'm sorry? Terrence gives you that ability to go vertical a little bit. He does, and he's got great upfield speed, and he can make plays on the ball. And, you know, sometimes when the wind's blowing out here like this, you can get a situation where the ball can get overthrown, obviously. Your call, Coach. We'll let Coach Watson call this. In this situation, Coach, you're third and, and long, third and ten. And depending on the situation in the game, obviously, if you're trying to look at three points here. Oh, sure. <laughs> Let's talk about the kicking situation well, a little bit. If we were in that situation, well, we'd and definitely where we definitely kick right it right now. here. It's a spring game. We're trying to have some fun and take a look at a lot of different players, but we certainly would do that. We'd certainly have have a. Uh, Let's, let's kick it. Let's take a look at the field goal here. And okay. still has the third it. down mark. We have a third down. They're going to take it back. Five. A third down here? Yeah, okay. I think, I think okay. we let's go. the game. <laughs> this last play here, Sean, let's do this. Let's go to Zebra personnel here. Okay? And let's go 127 opposite. I think this is a great opportunity to throw a corner route. And this is... A, uh, a position on the field or an area on the field, Greg, where you can try to get a corner route by the inside receiver to the backside pylon. So we'll watch number 87 in the slot there and see if he can't run and get open and try to find a way to get to the corner. The route's open, but I think they got a sack. Yeah. <laughs> Containment problems up front that time. Okay. What do you have with yardage on the sack? Where are they going to place this ball? Now we're out of range. Okay. 
No, I, it's really long, brother. It's out of his range right here. Okay. Okay, anything you want, your call, coach. This isn't a situation you want to be in very much. No. no. <laughs> And, and Sean Watson, you, he's now your offensive coordinator. That's a, that's right. an adjustment from you from last season. It is, and it's, it's been seamless in terms of adjusting to what we're doing here. He, Sean knows the West Coast offense inside and out. He ran it well at Colorado, and he's done an excellent job with us in the year that he's been here. Yans down the field. Could have a flag on that, and we do. Well, let's see how the officials mark this one, huh? Well, this could be an automatic first down for the offense here. You know, Matt talked about a veteran group you have on offense. That offensive line, you've had some guys nicked up in the spring, but that's allowed you to play some other guys and get some reps. You, got it. you feel like your depth there is really good. But the depth has been excellent. And, of course, we've got three top linemen that are out. And it's, it's interesting to note, Greg, that with these guys out, you know, we've had a number of players step up into the mix. So we're... We're in good shape with our offensive line. We'd like to see some of our guys get healthy and back, but we'll end up going into the season what we think will be 10 outstanding linemen, which, which is not the norm. Usually you go into a season with eight healthy linemen that can, can play a lot of different positions, but now we have a little bit more depth. We have a little bit more flexibility with this group. So the offensive line, you feel good about that. Obviously the wide receiver position is a position that we feel, you know, you feel very strongly about here in Lincoln. When we look at the quarterback position and, you, and everyone's talking about uh, who it's going to be, how do you evaluate that and how long do you see that going and, and, and that evaluation? Well, it will go into the heart of training camp. Uh, there's no question about that. And there's, like we talked about in the production meeting yesterday, there are so many times that, that things change and they'll change during the course of the summer conditioning and also training camp that we really try to hold true to our evaluation and not announce the starter until the first week of the season. Uh, but it's constant. It's continual in terms of the performance on a day-to-day -day basis. Martin Lucky. Short gain on second down. It's a, again, you're watching the Nebraska Red White spring game here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Around 60,000 fans have joined us here today. And we are delighted to have head coach Bill Callahan with us up here in the booth. Greg Sharp and Matt Davis are describing the action. Nebraska's red team, which is their number one squad, with a lead of 35 to nothing over the white squad. And now faced with a third and long. And this drive was prolonged by an interference penalty on the white squad that kept it alive for the red. Now you got third and long here. Well, this is going to be an interesting call. You know, we end up in the shotgun here. We try to put three, three of our best receivers to the field, the tight ends to the right. So this is an interesting call. We're just going to try to throw what we call a triple post here. And we get flushed, and we have an opportunity to make a play outside on the boundary. And they'll say that he was, Todd Peterson was out of bounds on that far side, so it'll be fourth down and maybe a chance here for a field goal. Coach, talk a little bit about just this situation here in Nebraska with 60,000 people at the spring game and how that is an advantage to your program and everything that goes on on a day like this and with recruiting and everything else, just how, how much of an advantage it is. Uh, it's certainly a great advantage, Matt. You know, with our fans and support, we think are the greatest fans in the country. And after the last three years now, we've led the country in spring game attendance. It just shows a tremendous boost and, and it gives our guys a lift, especially the recruits that come here. So that when they're in this environment, in this atmosphere, uh, it, it's second to none. So why wouldn't you want to come to school? That is Alex Henry with a 36-yard field goal to push the score up to 38. Nothing, Coach, we're getting close to half. We're going to let you go. So you can get down to the locker room. Will you come back in the second half? Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. Head Thanks, coach, coach Bill Callahan joining us up here in the booth. We're in Lincoln, 38 nothing but red with the lead over the white you're watching Nebraska's spring game on the NFL now. they've come from young and old far and wide to come watch Nebraska's spring game here today and temperatures in the 50s for the finale of Nebraska's spring football workouts. The red, the number one unit, is dominating this first half. Here's Marcus Mendoza. It's collared across the 20 yard line. Number 32, Mendoza on the return. Two weeks from today, join NFL Network to see who your favorite team is going to select in this year's NFL draft. Complete NFL draft coverage April 28th to 29th on NFL Network.
That was an interesting segment to have Joe Callahan up here with us calling the plays. Yeah, and he gets a different perspective on things. Like he said, sit, sitting up here and I mean, he sees this view on film, but to see it actually happening live, it's good for him in the evaluation process, too. As we see the red team continue to dominate here in the first half, and I guess that's what you want to see. Sure. You're, when you're one, you're playing the rest of your team, you want to be dominant, and that's what's happened here today. So for Nebraska, that's a, a positive that it's a lopsided game at this point in time. You can see that the series history, the red has won seven of the last eight. You want your red to win every time. You want a, a clear cut difference between your ones and the rest of your football team. You know, you want depth, but you need your ones to be a, a dominant team. As Witt over the middle, Franz Hardy with a drop. It'll be third down. And you want them to gain, gain confidence in a game like situation like we have today. You want your red team to go out there and play with the confidence, play with the swagger, and understand you know that they can be dominant. Here's the young true freshman from Wiley, Texas, Patrick Witt. Sean Watson told us yesterday, Nebraska's offensive coordinator, he thinks Patrick's going to be really good. There's some pressure from the front four of the red to force a sack. And Dominic Sue. Sue once again. And his coaching staff expect, expects Sue to have a big season. Really shore up that defensive line and clog things up there in the middle and, and really be the staple there up front and allow those linebackers to really make plays. He's going to force a lot of double teams there on the defensive line. Fourth down, the White will be forced to punt. Michael Such will drop back near the goal line. So we're inside the last three minutes of the first half. And no contact allowed on the punt team. They will rush on the punter, and only a fair catch can be called by the receiver, which in this case is Courtney Grigsby. You just want to be efficient in the kicking game there today. You want to get the snaps and, and field the punts properly. When you look at how Nebraska gets to that next level, how can they start to beat the teams on the schedule like USC and Texas and Oklahoma? And Auburn, like in the in the Cotton Bowl last year, how are they able to do that? It's the it's the things like the special teams. It's making the extra effort and making the extra play here and there because Nebraska feels like they were close in a lot of ways to winning those games. Just a bounce of the ball here or there. So just being more efficient in the small things, continuing to do what what you did last year, but just doing a little bit better. You talk about 2007. It's not going to be easy. You got a lot of bowl teams on this schedule, including Nevada, Wake Forest, and USC. All three were in bowls a year ago. Yeah, it's a pretty tough non-conference schedule. Going to Wake Forest and coming home to USC and Nevada was a bowl team last year. Played Miami tough in their bowl game. Nine of the 12 opponents in the regular season next year for Nebraska played in a bowl game last year. Kansas, one of them that didn't, but they were bowl eligible at six and six. You see the tough road contests going to Texas and Kansas, who's going to be much better this year. Obviously, with USC and Wake Forest earlier in the season, and going to Missouri is another tough game. So there's going to be every week for this Nebraska team this fall is going to be very important and a question mark game. Sam Keller, 9 of 10 so far in this game for 185 yards. And there's a drop by Cody Glenn up near midfield. And That'll make it fourth down for the first time in this game. The Red is going to be forced to punt with a minute five to go in the first half. And you have to think for for this team that if they if they're able to go to Wake Forest and get it and get a win, if they're able to beat a USC here in Lincoln, that once you get over that hump a little bit and and win one of those games, you start to believe a little bit more. The guys that are returning from last year's team saw them lose. They were part of losing four or four of the five games they lost for the top ten teams. You need to start winning those games when you're playing in a program like Nebraska. Expectations are high, tradition, everything that goes into this football program. You expect to win games like that. And once you win one or two of those, then as players you start to expect to win those games and gain more confidence with it. Dan Titchener with the punt. It's a favorable bounce inside the ten. 
And we are inside the final minute of the first half. Again, the first half was going to be played as a normal half of football, as you see the rabid fans here in Lincoln ready to cheer on the Huskers as they exit the field. They're up uh, down that tunnel area. Second half will be used a running clock for the spring game. Bo Davis will engineer the white squad again here in this possession. We talked to Bill Callahan about the offense and what he wanted to get out of today and they're going to evaluate the number of snaps that they they were able to get in here in the first half and then that'll determine a little bit of how the second time the second half works out. Nebraska's offense last year an interesting stat Nebraska ran 965 plays of offense last year during the season that was number one in the country 965 plays led the country in number of snaps from offense able to control the ball in a lot of games and sustain a lot of drives that means you're converting a lot of third downs keeping your offense on the field Davis throws it deep downfield and overshoots the intended receiver on the far side Andre Jones in the coverage Dan Erickson the intended receiver third down offensively the Huskers Average 30 points a game and made marked improvement, Matt, from 2005 to 2006, which with a senior quarterback a year ago in Zach Taylor, you would have expected that offense to get better, and it certainly did in 06. Right, and the talent level, I think, has gone up each of the last two or three seasons, and I think going into this fall, the talent is even better than it was last year. The only real question mark is that quarterback position, and obviously that's a big one. That's the big one, and whoever it is is going to have a lot of playmakers and veterans in front of him blocking and making plays. And so I think for Nebraska, they expect that number to go up, the number of points per game, the efficiency offensively. They have big-time expectations. And that may have been the final play of the half. The white will not need to snap the ball to get the punt off before we hit half as we're inside the final 10 seconds. Yeah, and the whistles blow. That does signal intermission. Well, a half dominated by the Husker ones, the red squad. They runs on offense, ones on defense. They lead comfortably 38 to nothing here at the half. All right, uh, Mike, I know that you believe defensive end is one of the deepest positions available in the upcoming draft, and there's a kid coming out of Nebraska who's the close to the top of the list. You know, and Adam Carriker is one of my favorite people in this entire draft for two main reasons. Number one, he brings scheme versatility to whatever team drafts him. He can play the 4-3 base defensive end at 6'6", six 296. Six, he can also kick inside and play what they call the three technique, or the upfield penetrating defensive tackle in pass situations. He's an ideal five technique. That's a defensive end for a three, four team. So regardless of what your scheme is, he can play in it. The second reason I like him, he's got the best technique and the best use of hands of any defensive lineman in this entire draft. And staying on the defensive side of the ball for Nebraska, there's another first day draft of selection that, that you really like. Yeah, another black shirt from Nebraska, Stuart Bradley, an outside linebacker. He's got great size. He's six feet four, 254 pounds. Again, scheme versatility. He can play the Sam or the strong linebacker in a 4-3 defense. I think that's what he's made for. He also is big enough and tough enough that you can kick him inside in a 3-4 defense. So he can play the 3-4. He can play the 4-3. He's a guy that broke a leg as a junior, was off the radar a little bit, had a great senior season. Fran, I see him as a solid second-round pick. Quickly, is there a perfect fit for Adam Carricker? Where do you see you think he might end up? I see him either number 11 at San Francisco, where he's in the ideal 3-4 defensive end, or number 13 in St. Louis, where he's a 4-3 end, which adds and shows you how good he is. He can play in either scheme. I don't see him even getting to Pittsburgh at number 15, who would love to have him. All right. As always, uh, great stuff from Mike Mayak. Let's send it back to Lincoln. Welcome back to Lincoln. 38 nothing. the red, the number one squad here in Lincoln has the lead. Bill Callahan addressed his troops at the half. Let's listen in. Keep playing hard. Does everybody got it? Yes, Keep playing hard, especially on special teams. You guys saw it. It's a different field out there in the kickoff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I know our kickers feel it, and I know the return team sees it as well. It's a different field. So let's try to make a play on the kickoff return. Let somebody make a play on the return and get that cranked up. 
Let's have some fun. Keep your intensity. We're going to roll the clock in the second half. We're going to get on and off, but I don't want anybody to let up. Has everybody got that? Yes, sir. Right, let's finish strong. So bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Don't let up, so we got to get better. Let's go. Right, let's on the show. Yes. All right, that was just a few moments ago. We welcome you back inside Memorial Stadium. As you heard Coach Callahan say, they're going to roll the clock here in the second half, so things will speed up here. And Got to keep that intensity up. A lot of times, Matt, injuries will happen when you try to go half speed or three-quarter speed. That's when you're going to suffer some injuries. That's exactly right. And you want to go out there, and every time you step on the field, you want to be at 100%. And even though you're beating up on each other today, you still want to be out there and playing as hard as you can. Keep that intensity up. So you just get in a habit of playing that way every time you step onto the field. Mendoza sheds a tackler. Across the 30, brought down by Todd Peterson. Boy, it is different. Kicking off from the 30-yard line, you're going to see a lot more returns this year. You're going to see pressure on defenses because you're going to see drives starting out at the 25, 30, 35-yard line in a lot of cases. That five yards is a big difference. I think it's going to help the game. I think it's going to make kickoffs a very exciting part of college football. And I think you're going to see a few more taken back in 2007 than you have the last couple of years. White will have it. Bo Davis in the shotgun. Steps up. Finds his outlet man. And a short game by Major Colbert. And there you saw the closing speed of Steve Octavian at that linebacker position. Bill Callahan talked about his versatility. They're able to put him on the line of scrimmage and rush, rush the passer. He's able to cover guys out of the backfield. And here you'll see after the catch, he's able to track down that running back and not allow any yards after the catch. Steve Octavian is going to be a big time player this fall for Nebraska if he can stay healthy. Well the strength of that defense is that linebacking core with McEwen and Root and Lance Brandenburg is a guy who can play all three positions of that linebacking core and will get a lot of snaps in the fall for Nebraska. And depth is so important for every team not just linebacker at every position because you're going to have guys get hurt. You're going to have guys go down with injury get nicked up. You play the, the type of schedule and the type of teams that you have to play in the Big 12 conference or really any conference throughout the season. You're going to have guys get banged up. So you have to have capable guys that have have had the reps in practice to be able to step in and get the job done. It was a drop for the white that would have been a first down for them. Now they have third and four from their own 39. Davis again on a shotgun. Has some time down the field. Intercepted. All oh, dropped. Wilson had it and dropped it. And that will go down as a negative play for the defense that time when one right in the in your mitts. That's an easy play for a safety. Brian Wilson reads the quarterback. See Davis kind of locked in on that receiver there in the seam. Wilson was thinking six points the other direction. And instead, it's going to be a return, a punt return for the Red Squad. Again, a rolling clock here in the second half. We were already almost three minutes into the second half and didn't have a first down there for the White. Low kick. Gets by Grigsby, and, and he goes and snatches it at about the eight-yard line. You, know, you, you mentioned earlier, Matt, that there's 81 players playing today. This will not be the entire squad for next year because you have that incoming recruiting class that will be here in August. Absolutely. Quentin Castile is one of those guys, and he's a big power back that this offense thinks that can step in and be a situational guy and probably play right away as a true freshman this fall. He's going to add depth to that running back position. other guys that are really Starting the half expected to make an impact 12, as the fall comes around Prince Amukamara. Oh you like that name. I really uh, you got to love the name but on top of that just the versatility not sure running back defensive back but this guy from watching his film is very versatile versatile fast able to make plays physical guy for only 180 pounds but still has the speed and quickness. Could be on offense or defense. Then you have Blake Lawrence, who's a, just a headhunter on defense. He will come up and hit you. 6'2", 200 pounds. He's going to be able to put on some weight and 
big things expected out of Blake Lawrence when he gets on campus. And again, it, all those you just mentioned are outstanding talent, but they're going to have some work to do if they're going to want to crack the lineup and get some playing time next year. And, but again, that will be some reinforcements arriving here in Lincoln in August. Gans rolls the pocket. And we'll just keep the ball and scoot out of bounds. It's the third or fourth time we've seen his ability to get out of the pocket. He extends the play. He's able to look downfield, give his wide receivers time. A lot of times big plays are made in the passing game off the quarterback scrambling, giving, him, giving his receivers the ability to get away from the coverage and make big plays. That time, Joey was just able to use his feet, get a nice gain of about seven or eight yards. Third and short here for the Red. First time they've had the ball here in the second half. Formation play action fake for Gans down the field complete to the tight end as J.B. Phillips falls in the catch for a first down for the Red Squad play action I think you're going to see Nebraska this year maybe use the play action a little bit more than last year Greg so efficient in the running game last year that you know I think you're going to see the play action pass become more of this offense and, and we're going to see more of those types of calls you saw it there J.B. Phillips able to get out of the, the tight end position and up the sidelines and make a nice play on a third and three. New set of downs here for the red. Lucky the one back behind Gans. And that's who he'll go to. Ball pops loose. And that is a fumble. So that'll be a turnover and the white squad gets it back. So the White will take over. We're back with more football in Lincoln here on NFL Network. Welcome back to Lincoln. Second half action of Nebraska's spring game between the Red and White. Red is their number one squad on both offense and defense. Patrick Witt back in the pocket, down the middle, in and out of the hands of Josh Mueller inside the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. You, know, you talked about the wide receiver core being a real strength mat of this team. A lot of options for these quarterbacks to look at. Yeah, a lot of different guys that are able to make plays down the field, short crossing routes. A guy like Maurice Purify runs the deep dig really well. He's really good in the red zone with that big body. Terrence Nunn, second leading receiver in Nebraska football history. Nathan Swift, we've seen what he can do today. So a lot of options for these quarterbacks, and there's a lot of depth at the wide receiver position. A lot of young guys that maybe won't see the field a whole lot because of the, the veteran squad there at wide receiver, but they add a lot of depth for that wide receiver position. Pass bobbled incomplete. Holt could not hang on to it, so it'll be third down. A couple of drops there, but you're seeing Patrick Witt in the pocket, the presence he has. I can't wait to see how he looks three or four years from now, or two or three years from now even. He's good right now, but you have to think as he gets older and, and understands the offense even more and becomes more physical, he's just gonna really blossom and be a great player. Third down for Witt and the white offense. Down the middle, pass complete, first down. Franz Hart, oh, that's Chris Brooks, makes that catch. Young man out of St. Louis. And the white will move the chains here as we're midway through the third quarter. Brooks was a guy when he came on campus, there were high expectations for him. As the NFL style body wide receiver. And has had a few injuries and I think this is the year maybe you see him emerge a little bit more, get on the field a little more, provides another weapon for these quarterbacks. That was the first third down conversion of the game for the White squad. No gain on that play. As Zach Potter makes the play. The Omaha product. Trying to fill one of those voids at the rush end position. 4-3 defense, Zach Potter, Jay Moore, and Adam Carricker both moving on to the NFL. You're going to see Barry Turner is not playing today. He's going to be one of those guys come the fall. And you have Potter and Chad, C or excuse me, uh, Seavers at the other uh, rush in position. Those are the guys that are going to have to step in and, and try to get it done. Brooks again on the catch. Octavian lassos him and brings him to the turf. 
brought down by number 15. We talked at the top of the broadcast, Matt, about one of the things the Huskers have to do is replace that defensive line and some talented players like Adam Character. Physical guys, you know, guys that are able to rush the quarterback and also clog things up in the middle def defensively and allowed our linebackers to make a lot of plays. But Jay Moore and Adam Carricker at the rush, they're going to be really tough to replace and big shoes to fill. Third down here for the White. Being rushed is Witt. Whistle blows. They'll register a sack for that defensive front. And again, there's Sue putting the pressure on Patrick Witt. He is going to cause havoc this year on that defensive line, no doubt about it. Big body and a guy that moves really well for how big he is. He's a linebacker's best friend. He's going to force a lot, a lot of double teams, and the guys on the ends hopefully can make big plays. Well, it's fourth down, but because of the field position game, the White will go for it here. Fourth and long, 17. Witt in the shotgun. Down the field, Holt overthrown, and the Red will be able to take over at the 34-yard line. So the Red in control here in Lincoln, 38-0, back with more football in Lincoln. We welcome you back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska's spring football game, the Red and White. Sam Keller back out to engineer the offense. Cody Glenn trying to get to the outside, does, turns the corner and has a first down. Rick Sharp, Matt Davison, rejoined by Nebraska head coach Bill Callahan. Your thoughts on what you've seen so far? I think it's been excellent for our team. Uh, we've tested a lot of different situations today, and it was great to get all the quarterbacks involved to see where they're at. And of course, our wide receiver play has been good. We don't have the number of backs, so you know, the running game took kind of a backseat today. But we did want to see pass protection. We did want to see that evaluated along with our passing game down the field. Offensively, you have to be pretty comfortable with how things have gone so far, especially for the red team. So far, so good. And of course, you know, both quarterbacks have done an outstanding job. And even even young Patrick Wood and Bo Davis have done an exemplary job with what they've had to deal with today. But I think, you know, by and large, this is just a great opportunity and atmosphere to be involved in. And you couldn't have a better situation than we have today. You told us yesterday with those quarterbacks, you really were going to be anxious to see their decision making process. What have you seen in that area today? I, I've seen solid performance across the board. I couldn't minus any of them with their decision making today. Uh, they put the ball in some tight spots. They hit the wide open receivers. Their progressions were very disciplined. So I come away very encouraged. Red with the ball in the white territory. Sam Keller. And there was a bad exchange in the backfield. And a turnover on the red gives the ball back to the white. And that's one of those things you don't want to see on a day like this. Turnovers, penalties. You just want to be efficient. You want it, you want it, to, you want it to be clean. And, you know, things like this kind of mar the scrimmage a little bit. And, and that's what it is. It's, it's basically a, a scrimmage situation. We've done the heart of our evaluation last week and the week before. So this is just an opportunity to go out with a vanilla, generic offense and defense and try to execute our offense. And, uh, you know, by and large, you don't want to see things like that occur in a, in a situation like this. So we'll go back and we'll correct it and get better from it. You, you, one of your slogans early on in your era here, Coach, was restore the order that I think has been accomplished so far in Lincoln. Now it's kind of taking that next step to be able to beat those teams and get yourself a conference championship. What needs to happen to have that take place? I think the overall consistency of what we're trying to get accomplished uh, in all three phases and not only on the field but off the field as well. We want to be a smarter football team. It starts with knowing what to do and how to do it. We want to be uh, much more physical and tougher and we try to ingrain that in, in uh, the midst of our spring practice. And the last thing is be dependable so we can count on each other. And I think that's the chemistry that we all talk about as coaches and players and that's that's what we're aiming to improve and try to build on as we go along through the spring and, and also the summer conditioning. We were just looking at some pictures of some of the folks that have come out here today watch this thing how about the passion of the fans for this program and what Nebraska football means to these people uh, this is tremendous I mean, you have the best fans in America here today Greg and they love football they they live and die for Husker football they bleed red through and through and this is a great day they're not in their gardens they're out here watching <laughs> football you know so what, what better situation can you have for the fandom of Nebraska well coach uh, this will wrap up spring ball but Talk a little bit about what you do now as a staff and with these guys, the rest of it, get, him, get them through school here and into the summer. 
and then heading into fall camp. What's the, the next process over the next few months uh, leading into the football season? Well, next week we'll have our exit interviews where the players will come in and meet with their position coaches and just get their final grades for the spring. And we head into our conditioning program. That's ongoing and continual. And then from there, Matt, we'll go ahead into to summer conditioning, which will be a little bit tougher, more competitive as we elevate that segment of our program. And then we enter training camp in August, which would be a, which would be a lot of fun and another opportunity to evaluate and upgrade our football team. But let me say this. I can't thank the NFL Network enough, you know, for putting this on. It's a great exposure for our program, for our players, and for any recruit out there that wants to come to Nebraska. Uh, this is the perfect platform for a spring game, and having the NFL Network host it means a lot to those players out there because they all dream of playing in the National Football League someday. Well, we thank you for coming up and spending some time with us here today. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. Coach Bill Callahan, Husker Spring Game. We're about to head to the fourth quarter. Back with more on NFL Network. 38-0. Red with a lead over the white as we begin the fourth quarter. You know, we talked about trying to take that next step, Matt, and last year when they battled some of the heavyweights in college football, came up short. That's the next step to be able to beat the USC's and the Texans. And there were ups and downs. Here's one of the downs. There's Terrence Nunn on a great hit by Aaron Ross. He knocked it out. That would have pretty much sealed the game for Nebraska. Instead, here in Memorial Stadium, Texas wins on a last-second field goal. Then the Oklahoma game in the Big 12 championship game, 21 to 7, but a game that was right there. Nebraska was in it the entire game, and a couple of turnovers didn't go their way. Then the Cotton Bowl, another really close game that Nebraska had a lot of opportunities in that they just didn't quite capitalize down the stretch. So those were four games against four heavyweights in the country, and they just came up a little bit short in each one of those. So obviously the objective is to be able to start winning those games and, and putting Nebraska right back at that top of the heap in college football. The Red fielding the punt to start this fourth quarter of play. And again, we thank head coach Bill Callahan for spending some time with us again here during the ball game. Spring games are different for head coaches. They do turn a lot of the responsibilities over to the assistant coaches like Sean Watson. They're working with the Red team offense and it allows the head coach to kind of roam around and do some other things. Sure, and this is the fourth year for Bill Callahan entering here. The fourth year for Bill Callahan and, and uh, taking over here in Nebraska. And, you know, nobody knows the expectations, and, and uh, no one wants to win more than Bill Callahan for sure. And I think now he, with the last two, three recruiting classes, he's been able to put together. You've been able to see the talent grow. The pieces of the puzzle are there for this team to be able to take the next step, win a conference championship, get to a BCS bowl game, and, and have a chance to win a national championship. That's ultimately what this is all about. That's what all the work is for in winter conditioning and spring ball and summer conditioning so that you go out there and have a chance to put a winning product on the, on the field and, and win every single game. And I think now Nebraska can say, we have good enough players to win every single game on our schedule. Just go out there and execute and get it done. Yeah, we talked about as we're watching the number one offense on the field right now that have to replace Zach Tater and that their offensive numbers across the board were better in 06 and 05. But Bill Callahan told us yesterday we still left a lot of yards on the field last year that we didn't convert. Sure, and it's not about changing schematically what they're doing. Do the same things you're doing now, just do them better. That was the message we got from Bill Callahan. He likes what they're doing. He likes the plays that they're calling, the plays that they're running. The execution needs to be a little bit better and and if that happens that's when those 17 to 14 games uh, start going in your favor instead of the other direction this is the third possession of the second half of the red team the first two have ended up in fumbles with fumbles by lucky and Cody Glenn here's lucky trying to get around the corner pulled down the ball may have popped out again they will say the ball is down and Greg that did not look good at all for Marlon Lucky. He got drugged down, it looked like, by the collar from the side and kind of got drugged down from the side and the back. Watch his legs as he's pulled to the turf. Looks like he might be holding his left leg a little bit. That ankle. Got caught underneath the defender there a little bit. Nice stiff arm on the defender, but you can see the ankle that caught underneath the defender. You just hope it wasn't a situation where the knee maybe got twisted. 
Oh boy, is that just a... Ouch. Ouch. You could hear a pin drop in this stadium right now. You see Marlon Lucky being taken off the field. You know, we are in the fourth quarter of the spring game. You would like for the ability to not have to play a Marlon Lucky this deep into a spring game, but because of some injury situations and Brandon Jackson leaving early for the National Football League, you don't have quite as much depth to that spot. And the good news here, it looks like Marlon's okay. Well, you hope so. He's walking off on his own power now, so that got an ovation. Here you see Bill Callahan down on the sidelines now, and you can bet he's going to be the first one over there to see how things are going with Marlon Lucky. It's going to be such a big part of this offense come September. Lucky with 94 yards and a touchdown today on 16 carries. There's a pass batted down. Cody Glenn battled throughout the spring in the running back competition. On your white squad, you have Major Colbert, Marcus Mendoza. Well, Lucky's the guy I think is the most complete back as you look at these guys. He was the, maybe more of a third down guy last year, but he's put on a little bit of weight. He's become more physical. He's able to run between the tackles, and he's great out of the backfield, catching the football either out in the flat or in those middle screens. So he's the guy that can really do everything for you. Then you have Cody Glenn, who's more of a battering ram. He's the short yardage back. And then the other two guys you really don't know yet at this point. And then we talked about Quentin Castile, who's coming in this fall. He's going to add depth, and he's going to be more of a guy that's a short yardage back. So Marlon Lucky, definitely the most complete guy right now in this Nebraska squad. Three possessions in the half for the Red. A couple of fumbles and now a punt. We're in the fourth quarter. The Red with the lead, 38-0 over the White. Back with more football in Lincoln on NFL Network. Back in Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska's spring game. Red all over the White. That's the ones of the Red. And the White has the ball deep in their own end. To start this drive, we just saw Martin Lucky limp off, but it appears to be okay. And here's a guy who, as you said, maybe the most complete back the Huskers have. Tremendous speed in the open field. You're not going to catch him once he breaks through the defensive line. And that's where he got much better last year as the season progressed. Getting that pad level down, he's able to take on defenders in the secondary and get those yards after contact. But Marlon Lucky really emerged as last season progressed. And he was really the guy by the end of the year, along with Brandon Jackson. After Jackson had a hand injury, Marlon Lucky was able to step up and really carry the load in the backfield. Good pressure up front by the Husker defense. And there you can take a look at Marlon being attended to along the Nebraska sideline. And here's a guy who can catch it, which is big out of this West Coast offense for your eye back to be able to be a good pass receiver. He was able to do so many different things. He could run it between the tackles. He could run off the edge and, and on sweeps and use his speed to get to the corner. And he was able to catch the ball. And he was used on special teams a lot on on kickoff returns so not to mention the leadership he is very valuable to this team Witt with a nice slant route completion gets it up to the 15 yard line as Dan Erickson makes the catch nearly 60,000 fans on hand today to watch this one some of them have headed for the exits as we're now midway through the fourth quarter. They love their football in the state of Nebraska. Well, no doubt. It's the topic of discussion every day of the year. And this is just uh, an extension of the, you know, people talk about the, the Super Bowl being a big day. Obviously it is, but there's seven Super Bowls in Lincoln, Nebraska every fall for the, for the Nebraska football fans. And this is just an extension of that. They love to come out. And the administration and the coaching staff do a good job here, Greg, of making it a game-like atmosphere. They use the, the replay boards, and they make it a game-like atmosphere for the fans here. Back with more action from Lincoln. 38-0, Red with the lead. Red with the football. Sam Keller at the quarterback spot. Cody Glenn. Weaving forward. Thomas Lawson actually was the carrier. Give it to the fullback that time. Lawson's a guy that's really battling right now to try to win that fullback job. Got the handoff there. Won't be getting a lot of handoffs playing the, run, the fullback position here in this offense. 
You do a lot of important things out of the backfield, catching the ball in the flats, lead blocking, obviously, and playing in the one back set in a lot of instances like Lawson's doing right now. Lawson again. Pulled down. It'll be third and short for the Red. And yet to score here in the second half, Ben Eisenhart makes a tackle. Two weeks from today, join NFL Network to see who your favorite team is going to select in this year's NFL Draft. Complete NFL Draft coverage April 28th to 29th on NFL Network. You know, there's people that make that like a game day. They have parties set up and they just get ready. They are so ready for that day to come. No doubt about it. And they want to see Sam Keller do some exciting things. Um, Joey Gans, both of, both of them have been impressive today. Keller threw that one away. Once again, that's the experience. You, know, you don't want to throw crazy passes down the field. Right. Don't force them. That was kind of the, the word on Keller was he's going to make a lot of big time plays for you, but he might also turn the ball over a little bit. And I know he knows that and he's worked on that. We've seen him a couple times today make a good decision. Just throw the ball out of bounds. White defense stops the red again here in the second half. Forcing a punt from Dan Titchener. To the white. Playing with some pride here in the second half. The second and third teamers for Nebraska. And fair catch by Franz Hardy. Matt Davison working with me here today is known nationwide for one play. Happened November the 8th, 1997. Nebraska's a point away from tying the game. The deflection is caught. You don't mind watching that again, do you? Well, I've seen it a few times. I had a good view the first time, that's for sure. I just can't believe it's been 10 years. How about that? I think that's the, the biggest surprise, and that was the last year that we won a national championship here in Nebraska. So uh, that's why that play became a bigger deal, was because we went on to, to win the national championship. So. Do you ever feel the need to apologize to Missouri Tiger fans that they have to see that over well, and over again? I've run into quite a few of them over the years and become friends with some of the players on the team at the time. And so uh, it's been fun conversation, no doubt about it. But. You know, I was just a freshman when that happened, and I'm pretty sure most fans, even Nebraska fans, can't even point out one other catch that was ever made. It's just that one, but it's like I say, it's better to be remembered for catching one than dropping one, right? That's right. Well, we are inside the last five minutes of this spring game. As you've watched this take place, anything jump out at you? Well, I like the efficiency the offense showed, and I like that, that they were able to make some plays in big chunks of yardage. This West Coast offense is about controlling the football and working your way down the field, converting on third downs and that sort of thing. But I think they have to have big play ability, big play mentality also offensively. You have a lot of weapons there. Try to get big chunks of yards and know you can go down the field at any time and put points on the board quickly. So I like that. I also like what I saw out of Ndamukong Su. I mean, I thought he was dominant on the defensive line today. And he's really going to be the guy in the middle there that's going to shore things up on the defensive line. Uh, with those linebackers, we know what we're going to get. And in the secondary, I don't know that they were tested much today because of the white squad. You're playing ones against twos, and and so you didn't you didn't see the secondary have to make a lot of plays really. So that's still a little bit of a question mark going into the fall, I think, especially at the safety position. Well, and we showed you the injury graphic earlier in the broadcast with Zach Bowman, who they really believe is their top quarter cover guy, not able to play today with an injury, but will be back for the opening of the season. Getting him back, then all of a sudden the guy who may be starting for you right now in a spring situation becomes your nickel, and then your nickel becomes your dime. Sure, and look, we have Gordon Grigsby and, um, and Andre Jones back at the corner position. Then you throw in Marillo, you throw in Zach Bowman, you get back. Then all of a sudden your depth is there. And then you throw Larry Asante in the safety position, along with Tier Green, who's returning starter, Brian Wilson. Now you have guys that can play multiple positions and it adds depth across the board. White stopped again on that third and short play. They'll be forced to punt. Whistles blow. Might have a legal motion. 
offense. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Look at Ted Gilmore, who has helped manage the white sideline today. Team got beat up a little bit today, 38 to nothing. But <laughs> have held their own in the second half. That's right, they sure have. And there's Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator. He's an impressive guy, isn't he? Sean Watson. I was impressed with our meeting yesterday with him. The guys really respond to him well. Jay Norvell is going to be dearly missed. But Sean Watson, very capable replacement. And well, here in Nebraska, their facilities take a back seat to none. It is a palace here. In August of 06, the Tom and Nancy Osborne Athletic Complex. That's the new home of Nebraska football. As well as the Charles and Ramona Myers Performance Center, the Strength Complex, the new Athletic Medicine Center, the administration offices. It truly is one of the finest facilities in all the country here in Lincoln for Nebraska football. Well, that's why you come play football at Nebraska, because of all of these things, not only athletically, but through the academic department, they're able to really give you the best opportunity to be successful. You get to enjoy these great amenities as a, as a student athlete. Uh, they give you every opportunity to be successful, not only on the field, but in the classroom. And as you look at this stadium and the locker room and everything that they're, you know, that just adds to how you go out and recruit the, the best players in the country and get them to come here. They want to play for the best, and Nebraska is able to provide the best facilities and the best game day atmosphere to give you the best chance to be successful. There's Thomas Lawson again on the carry, just short of a first down. So we're inside the last minute. Boy, the running clock makes a difference. It scoots this half by. With 75 guys here today being recruited by Nebraska, you can imagine them walking through these facilities. They can imagine themselves running onto the field. This just being a practice in front of 60,000 people. Imagine on a game day how much more it's mag uh, the magnitude is much more at that point. And so that's a great recruiting tool here for the for Nebraska to be able to use this game and try to get some recruits in town. The old the old saying that Memorial Stadium on game day is the third largest city in the state of Nebraska. Puts it in the count where they have put 80,000 folks into the stands here in Lincoln. Well, that's going to be the final snap of the game. The Red put 38 on the board in the first half. We're shut out of the second half, but win comfortably with the ones beating the rest of the, the football team. And again, we talked a lot about the quarterbacks, Gans and Keller. They both play pretty well. That competition's not over yet. Definitely not. And they're both going to continue to work throughout the rest of the spring and summer conditioning and then into fall. Sam Keller, Joey Gans, whoever it ends up being this fall, they're going to have a good offense to work with. Bill Callahan is excited about his team going into the fall. And I think Nebraska fans have a lot to talk about, a lot of positive things to take out of today's practice. My thanks to Matt Davison, to producer Chris Pfeiffer, and to our entire NFL Network crew. Final score, the Red beats the White today in the Nebraska spring game here in Lincoln, 38 to nothing. Greg Sharp saying good night from Lincoln.